Oh, hello again, DP Crazy Lady. It's uh, 11.47. Uh, A.M. Almost noon. Uh, on Wednesday, the 17th. April. Uh, I'm working on, I was going to work on the cross stitch and I just couldn't, I don't know, I couldn't get the drive to do it. So I'm working on the last panel <clears throat> that I started last night of the uh, Chuck Pinson Sierra River Fall by Diamond Art. Um, I thought I would do you know that it's it's uh, kind of uh, confetti heavy, but with solid areas. But uh, I don't mind it. It probably looks a little sloppy too, uh, because there's so many different areas. <coughs> I'm hoping you can see it. I don't know how much light there is. And I lied, it's gotten a little colder and I had to have my heat back on again. It got a little too cold. So, I think it's, it's 67 now, but it got pretty chilly overnight and it rained again. So, um, I thought, like I said, I'd come on for a little bit and, uh, Probably not a whole lot to talk about. Uh, and, you know, not much happening from the night before till today. So, uh, today for supper, we're going to have a, like a little teeny mini steak little thing. And then I'm just going to make a whole bunch of broccoli, steam a head or so of broccoli. And that's what we'll have for dinner. I love veggies and I love broccoli. So, uh, for breakfast, all I had, I had a yogurt. <coughs> I ran out of tomatoes for my uh, cottage cheese. So, I went ahead and had a yogurt. And uh, for lunch, uh, I'm going to, uh, I still have some of the... Uh, rotisserie chicken that I had left over from yesterday and I think I'm going to make a small wrap uh, for lunch if I feel like eating it, it just depends some days I don't even feel like eating lunch and they keep saying oh you should eat it you should eat it and I just don't get the idea that why should I force myself to eat if I'm not hungry and on my next appointment, I'm going to discuss it again with the doctor and tell her to tell the dietician to call me because I don't have the number of that dietician anymore, uh, the diabetic dietician, because she, uh, <clears throat> the last time I talked to her was, well, well over a year and a half ago because she said I was doing so good that, you know, she, well, she had, I, I think I've talked to her maybe three times. The first time was to discuss, you know, uh, my symptoms or uh, the diet I would need to be on and blah, 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 and, you know, and then the next time I talked to her, she said she was sending me out, uh, pamphlets and leaflets and everything on uh, other food choices and so on and so forth. Then the uh, last time I heard from her was her just calling to check up on me and finding out that uh, my A1C, which my A1C had dropped after the, the third or fourth month of being diagnosed so by the time she called me I had already uh, had everything 
basically under control so that when she started talking to me and asked me about my A1C and all that, when she heard about it, she said, well, I don't see where, you know, I need to discuss anything with you any, you know, further. Um, but that, she, you know, if I needed her, you know, I could talk to the doctor and, you know, get other information or whatever. <clears throat> but anyway, you know, because I had said something to her before about, well, uh, you know, she said, well, you know, if you, when you're thirsty, you know, you'll probably be thirsty and blah, blah, blah. I said, no, I'm not. I don't, feel, you know, because if you're a diabetic or, you know, they always say, oh, you're going to feel thirsty and, you know, hungry all the time and so on and so forth. But I don't. I don't. I don't feel that urge to like, oh, I got to get what, you know, I got to drink, I drink, drink, drink. I'm not thirsty, and I don't always have the urge to eat. You know, if I eat my breakfast, I can, yeah, I myself can go the whole rest of the day. If I eat my breakfast at seven or eight o'clock in the morning, I don't feel hungry again until about five or six in the evening, like right around my basically scheduled dinner time that I've been eating I've been eating dinner at about five o'clock uh, since the 70s because I got used to it with my first husband you know come home from work uh, you know he'd, he'd come in the door at about five and the dinner would already be on the table because I had nothing else to do, you know, so I'd start supper at, depending on what I was making, it would, you know, it started at, if it was a, a, a bigger meal, then it would be started at around 3.30, quarter to four. But most of the time, uh, I could get dinner started and ready and done, you know, in like 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes, depending on what we were having. So I got used to eating at five o'clock, and that's when I would eat. You know, so uh, I don't feel hungry any of the other times of the day, really. I mean, you know, I could go one meal a day if, if you know, if that's what I wanted to do. But apparently, they want you to eat. <clears throat> three times a day plus two snacks. I can't do it. I can't do it, and I'm sorry, but I won't do it. Because I tried that for quite a while in the beginning, and oh my gosh, my stomach would hurt so bad because I was full. I mean, I, you know, it, it's like, you know, say you want... Uh, I, my stomach can get so full if I drink too much coffee or I drink too much any kind of liquid. You know, you start drinking it and it's like part way through, it's like, oh, if I put one more swallow in, you know, then I I feel bloated and, and uncomfortable the rest of the day. So, uh, it's like... I, I, I've got to discuss it with them and see what, you know, what they say. Because the dietician told me, you know, well, you know, eat, eat some, even an apple or, you know, I, I can't. You know, it's like, you know how uh, when you get so full, if you take that next bite, you feel nauseous or, you, you know. Uh, or what bothers me is when I am full and I see somebody else eating... It, I I can't. It 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 makes me want to gag, because I've already I'm full. I don't want to even see anybody else eating, on TV or in real life, you know. So uh, I'm gonna have to have that discussion, and see what they suggest. Uh, you know, because if they're running all my tests and my, you know, all my other levels are 
good, you know, blood work and everything else, I can't see where they have to, you know, tell me, force myself to eat. Um, and I sent a message to my uh, sister through Facebook, uh, which, like I said, I don't like Facebook. I only use Facebook to play a few games. That's it. I don't do anything on Facebook. But I sent her a message asking her to let me know what day she plans on coming up. She'll probably go to my other sister when she comes up and uh, basically hide from my mother and then surprise her on the day of her birthday, probably, unless she comes down, a, you know, a day before. Uh, you know, but I told her, I said, let me know when you're coming because I don't like last minute you know, things, so um, I'll probably, I'll check with it later today, I'm sure I'll get an answer, I made a statement to my daughter the other day about, God, I would like to maybe do something with my hair, uh, I don't, I would like to have it cut halfway decent and dyed, but the one time I went and had my hair cut, well, the last couple times I had my hair cut, why is it, now I've got long hair, yes, 72 years old, got long hair, I pin it up if I go somewhere, you know, but it's mostly down my back, uh, getting ready to hit my waist. But, uh, I don't mind it. doesn't bother me. I never was a uh, style type person. But why is it when you have long hair and you walk into any beauty shop, and my mother used to say the same thing, because my mother used to have beautiful long auburn hair. Beautiful. Uh, we've all gone a little bit gray now. I don't have as much gray as I thought I would. A little on the top and stuff, nothing down the sides, whatever. But I'm sure it's, you know, showing up. But anyhow, uh, you go into a beauty shop and you tell them, okay, I want my hair cut at the shoulder blade. Not the shoulder, not the neck not below the ears, trim off about, that would make it about two inches, you know, at my shoulder blade. Every time I go in and tell them that, the one time I came out of there and oh, I was ticked. They had cut it all the way up uh, to about the middle of my neck. I about had a heart attack. Then the next time I went in, I said the same thing, and I even showed him the style I wanted, and they chopped it right off. At just laying on my shoulder, and that's not where I wanted it. It was a little bit above the shoulder. And that was at a place that was an expensive beauty shop. I mean expensive. Had the hair dyed, cut and dyed and styled, and it was about $150. And I complained and told them, you know, the dye job was okay. Wasn't exactly the color I wanted, but the dye job was okay, but I would never come into them again for a haircut. It was the worst they'd ever done. They chopped it up. I mean, when she came and did it, I thought, oh, my God, because I, I noticed when she she just grabbed the back of my head and she said, oh, yeah, we need to trim it off so that when we dye it, you know, it's not using as much dye, blah, blah, blah. And she just went behind me and just went, chop. I mean, just a straight across cut and went... And I thought, oh, my God. And what was I going to do then? You know, what am I going to say to him? 
But after I got it back, they didn't charge me for the haircut. Big deal. Uh, but I told them, I said, that's it. And I had been to that place a year, about two or three years before that. And uh, they did a beautiful job on my hair the one time. Really nice. A nice style. The right dye job. Everything. And I thought, that's why I went back again. And nope. Nope. They And so now, every time my daughter mentions something about getting a haircut or getting her hair dyed, so I... I I can't get enthusiastic about it. It just, it scares the hell out of me because I just know they're going to screw it up. They're, they're going to screw it up. I have yet to find a place that uh, does hair right. I, I just, I don't when that one guy passed away, he was he used to do uh, in the air in the town where I was born, which was not too far from here. We had a place like called the Kenley Players, where the uh, movie stars, actors, and things would come. I got a piece of hair here. Dang it! The movie stars would come, and. Uh, They'd go to the uh, Packer Music Hall. That's where that was. And uh, some of you may not even know it, but I'm sure if you looked it up, you'd see it. It's not the same now. But uh, they used to come here and do the plays and, and uh, visit. And the uh, stylist we had here, he used to do a lot of their, their hair for them the women and stuff that would come and uh, he I had my hair done by him uh, in the 60s when I uh, graduated high school and he did my hair for my graduation pictures and he beautiful job beautiful and I've I had had my hair cut by him and, and died and things several times through the years and he was so good he was so good and he never believed in having you sit uh, when he would cut your hair you had to stand because he said you know you're, you're standing around anyway you don't cut hair sitting you're slouched you're you know, you need to stand and stand straight up so the hair could be trimmed just right, the way it fell. I mean, that's the way he did hair, and he was fast. And he always did a beautiful job, a beautiful job. And then he passed away. My mom used to complain, too. She said, oh, if Joe were still around, you know, he could, you know, do her hair just perfect and everything. He was he was fantastic. He passed away a few years back. So, I, I'm hard-pressed to find anybody. You know, that... I mean, there's plenty of those schools around here. And, oh, my God. They chopped my hair up one time. Oh, my Lord. I, you know, I guess you take your chances on that one. But all I kept thinking was, is, good Lord, if this person graduates and goes to a beauty shop, somebody's going to be in trouble. Uh, I know I'm talking about my hair a lot. Sorry about that. But I need to get something done or, I don't know. I, I don't want it short, short, because uh, I don't like short hair on me. But, uh. Something's got to be done. So, like I said, I'm just working on this. Uh, it's a little bit boring to me at times. It's you know because it's these darker colors, and that's I'm waiting to get into the uh, the reds and brighter shades. 
after a while. <laughs> so, uh, nothing else. Uh, well, that, that, that uh, the seven great that, uh, <clears throat> sent me the Fox and stuff. They're sending a couple other uh, things, I think. But it's nothing to uh, cross-stitch. I uh, just picked out a couple little items. So, who knows when those will be around. Uh, still have not heard from GBFKE. Don't know why. Normally, they don't take that long. So, uh, to, to send it tracking. So, I'll figure that one out. Probably have to uh, email them again because I want to make sure you know if it shows up, I want to be here. Uh, if it's left on my uh, steps, I don't want something. You know, I've not I've not had the issue before where anybody's walked off with anything, but uh, so many different people in and out of the park you know you don't trust anyone so and if it comes through uh, the post office and uh, they drop it off the steps they don't knock on the door they just throw it down on the step and walk away where uh, UPS will knock on the door FedEx will knock on the door you know but the post office, nah, they just, I think if they could just drive by and throw, they would do it. So, you know, see, told you there's not a whole lot to talk about. Just babble, babble, babble. Uh, about nothing in particular. Yep, there's nothing going on. That's it. I think I've reached my limit. Uh, as far as come, all oh, the people next door showed up again yesterday. The kids all, you know, still talk to uh, my daughter was out there with the puppy. And, you know, they, oh, Liam, 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 you know, they wanted to pet him and he didn't want anybody to pet him. He's still afraid of, you know, strangers. And uh, their mother was over there. She saw me, but she never said a word. So I don't know, you know, what her issue is. Still have not seen the electric company over there, so I don't know what they're doing. I know they want to move anyway, because that's what she had talked about, because the place is so bad. And... Uh, they want to stay in the area because the kids like the school and they don't want to change schools. So, who knows where they're at and what they're doing and whatever. But, I think they need to do something. So, well, I finished what was in this tray and... I think I've conversated enough of uh, absolutely nothing. Uh, I'm going to work, I think I'm going to work on this all day and finish this section. And uh, then I'll set it aside. And the only two things I'll work on then uh, is um, the uh, welcome gnome and the cross stitch so I can get it done <clears throat> as far as the other piece that they had sent uh, I don't know if and when I'll ever work on it I don't know it may have been maybe easier because the colors are right on there but I doubt it I'm I'm sorry I don't like stamped cross stitch uh, you know I used to do needlework uh, you know on the canvases uh, and, uh, you know, they, it would be color-coded, and you would just take your colors, you know, and add it in. 
that was okay because that was something I had learned then. I didn't start doing cross stitch, you know, until, like I said, uh, well, I started it in my uh, late 30s, but as far as with a company and things like that, it's been about 35 to 40 years, about 40 years. So, you know, I remember when I first learned to cross stitch, uh, I thought, oh, this is going to be hard. How do you figure out, you know, it's a blank piece of material. Where, the, And a friend of mine, like I said, she uh, was doing cross stitch and she showed me how it was done. I thought, oh, well, that's pretty easy, you know, and it just went from there because uh, there was more than one company that I dealt with and uh, I used to deal with individual designers and do for them but uh, then I started with you know when uh, the one designer uh, decided to uh, send her work uh, out of the country to have it done and then ship back uh, it became more mass production for her that way and less expensive. So I went to another company, uh, or she recommended another company, and I went with them, and I had been, well, I've been with them ever since. So I really enjoy it. Uh, I, made, I always made a game out of it, a challenge, that whatever they sent me, I would try to see how fast I could get it done and get it back to them. So I would spend, and that's the truth, I would spend between 15, about 15 to 18 hours a day. And yeah, that's a lot. Now there's breaks in between, you know, to make lunch or to make dinner, you know, or to do something I had to do. But I would spend approximately 15 to 18 hours a day on cross stitch and uh, that's you know I would just try and just punch them out see how fast I could get them back and uh, since I had done that there were many many times they would uh, email me and say hey we've got a deadline can you do it blah, 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 and I'd get it done, get it back, and it worked. And, you know, maybe I, maybe I became one of their more valuable cross-stitchers. I don't know, but they liked my work, and they liked that I did it very well and quick. So, but I think I'm burning myself out on cross stitch, uh, because uh, you know it's a lot more concentration than diamond painting. You know, there's no counting, there's no uh, making sure that your X's are a certain way, and uh, it's easier to make a mistake on cross stitch than it is on diamond painting. And there was just way too much concentration where with diamond painting, I can lose myself while I'm diamond painting. I can diamond paint and still daydream or still listen to a program. I can still look up and watch the program and come back to diamond painting because I'm not losing my place. Now, I learned with the cross stitch, I could do that after a while, you know, and I could do my cross stitch and then, but I always had to mark my charts, uh, there's a lot of people I know don't, they never mark their charts. How they follow it, I have no idea. They're better at it than I am when it comes to following the chart. But I have to mark my chart. So I mark the place I'm at. So, okay. I'm getting off here. Uh, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get a little bit of lunch. And uh, I will talk to you all tomorrow which is Thursday. I'll have my uh, dinner from the church, so no telling what they'll have. Last week it was pasta. Oh, my God. And I shouldn't have ate it. But I did. Uh, it wasn't, uh, it was about 
it was a two serving amount of pasta and I should only ate the one but I hadn't had anything like that for a while so I ate it so okay I think the puppy's acting up my daughter is going to have to take him out so I will get back with y'all tomorrow have a good uh, day have fun enjoy it uh Hugs. Love you all. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for coming. Thanks for viewing. DP Crazy Lady. I'm out.